person responsible for this deception. And that person is Mr. Wright. It is Mr. Wright by his own admission. Well, the hits just keep on coming in this story, and Nigel Wright took the heaviest fire again today, with the Prime Minister declaring that the deception at the root of this scandal was Wright's alone. It was a stunning statement from Stephen Harper, who for days after the scandal broke, was still calling Wright honorable and deserving of his full confidence. The insiders in a minute, but first up, Chantel in Montreal, Bruce in Ottawa, and Andrew here in Toronto. The Prime Minister did go after Mike Duffy as well, but... That line on Nigel Wright uh, was quite a step up of his criticism of his former chief of staff. What did you make of that, Andrew? Well, it shows that that line about how I dismissed him was not a slip of the tongue. That this is the new line. I think there's a lot of doubt whether any of this is actually true. But what I think you can say with some certainty is at some point we are going to hear from Nigel Wright. And what he will say will either be helpful to the government or hurtful to the government's position. And it sure sounds from what they're saying today that they don't expect it's going to be helpful. So they're setting him up uh, to try to impugn his credibility. Uh, I don't think they're going to be terribly successful in that effort. And a reminder that he has not spoken publicly at all, and it says he won't until after this is resolved one way or another. Chantel on this? Well, beyond the quote about Nigel Wright, the Prime Minister today admitted that there was a deception. He didn't try to deny what Mike Duff. He had said yesterday that there had been a lie engineered uh, in his own office. So he basically had uh, two choices, either to say I was a liar and I knew about it, or else I was dumb and my own office cooked up a story that I bought hook, line and, sink and sinker, and he decided to go for the dumb defense. The only way to do that was to say Nigel Wright, my, my top uh, political aide, uh, was behind this because this is not something that someone would freelance on at a lower level in the office. Basically, is where Paul Martin was on the night of the sponsorship story, uh, given a choice between being clueless or being uh, into a conspiracy, he had picked clueless. Bruce? Well, Peter, the Prime Minister laid a beating on Mr. Wright's reputation today, the likes of which none of the opposition parties have done. And as I was watching it, I couldn't help but wonder, uh, what are all of those Conservatives who, after Mr. Wright left his job, we're at pains to say what an ethical person he was, what fantastic judgment he had shown as, a, as an individual that they'd known for many years. And what are they thinking now? Are they rueful because they're learning that he had actually terrible judgment and really weak ethics, or are they more rueful about the way that he's being treated by the leader of their party? I think that's a question that's going to be talked about a lot in the, in the corridors this weekend. Aside from that one line on Nigel Wright, the thing that struck me most watching Question Period today was the number of times the opposition party laughed at the Prime Minister's answers. And, I, you know, I can't recall a time seeing a Prime Minister treated that way by an opposition uh, party. I've seen the government treat the opposition parties that way and opposition leaders, but never the Prime Minister. What does that tell us about how the Prime Minister is being perceived at this moment in this story? Um, Chantel, you start us on. Uh, floundering. Uh, and you could see it on the face of the MPs that were sitting behind Stephen Harper. It's one thing to cheer when the Prime Minister goes after Mike Duffy that I think every Conservative now would like to have disappeared. It's another to ask him to cheer when he's taking shots at Nigel Wright and his chief of staff and basically trying to make the case, for instance, that uh, they paid legal expenses for Mike Duffy, who was always in the wrong. Everyone could see that the prime minister had so many holes in the story that he was putting forward that Thomas Mulcair didn't even need to do anything else except laugh. Andrew? Uh, to pick up Chantel's word, if you're trying to make yourself look clueless and your story is hard to buy on that front, then you're, un you're in trouble in two ways. You're, if you people buy your story, then you look like a dupe, and there's all kinds of holes in your story which make you look foolish trying to make that story stick. So this is, I think, very difficult for Mr. Uh, Harper because, you know, people, the knock on him, or the assessment of him has always been, well, he's brutal but effective. Right now he's just looking kind of brutal and hapless, and, and for somebody who rules by essentially force and fear, and not least within his own party, uh, that's, uh, that's not a comfortable position for him to be in at all. Bruce? These have been terrible days for Senator Duffy, but they've also been terrible days for Prime Minister Harper. Uh, you know, I think at the root of things, the Canadian public wants to believe that the Prime Minister is an honest person and that he's got sound judgment. And I think the way that the Prime Minister is handling these questions is raising more questions about that rather than resolving those. We know really clearly what's not working and really clearly was an intended 
important comment. Whenever he says it's really clear, whenever he says it's really simple, whenever he says things that sound like the other guys are worse, none of those things are, uh, are having much positive effect from his standpoint in public opinion, and I think he's got to move off those positions. What are the outstanding questions at this moment in this story? Andrew? There's so many, but I think the biggest one for me is what else does Mike Duffy have? He seems to be sort of spooling this out a little bit at a time, and you get the sense that he is kind of trying to ratchet up the, the stakes, ratchet, ratchet up the pressure, that he's bargaining for something. At the surface, it would just be he hopes to hold on to his uh, paycheck in the Senate, but what else is he after? And why is the government sort of walking into his fire? I mean, they must have known what he has. You know, they sent most of it to him. Uh, and yet they just look like they're kind of marching onto the machine guns. Bruce, what's your outstanding question? Well, I think the two issues that are really important here is that, you know, this whole question of we wouldn't conceive of, I wouldn't as Prime Minister have conceived of paying his expenses that he didn't earn, but it's a perfectly normal thing for the party to pay his legal fees. I don't think that squares at all. I also think this story about a phony a line of defense uh, making up some story about a bank loan as cover. If that story is true, that's a dagger to the heart of this party. It goes right to ethics and honesty. But basically today the Prime Minister told you that was true when he said there was a deception. Uh, the only way there would have been a deception that his office took a, a hand in would have been if, if they had collaborated, cooperated in making up the personal loan story. So I think they were trying to get ahead of Mike Duffy with that. I'm not sure it's going to work. I guess what's over their heads is uh, what, at what point does Nigel Wright uh, pull the, the, the rug from under them, not by implicating necessarily the Prime Minister, but by having someone let the pe people know that that's how the PMO operates. All right, we're going to leave it at that uh, for tonight. Uh, you'll be back on Thursday, your normal night. Great to see you tonight.